today I'm going to demonstrate how to configure rapid spanning tree protocol on an ICX switch. The easiest way for me to demonstrate this is to start out by introducing my lab environment. I have three ICX 7150C12P switches in my lab. They are currently running switching firmware and I've simply given them very simple host names of switch A, switch B and switch C. I have uh, links between these switches. Um, I'm not running stacking, so each of these switches are individual. I have 10 gig fiber uplinks, and you know those interfaces are Ethernet 1 slash 3 slash 1 and 1 slash 3 slash 2. Um, I also have 1 gig Ethernet links between the switches, and those interfaces are represented as 1 slash 1 slash 11 and 1 slash 1 slash 12. The topology is redundant and most modern day networks today do run a redundant topologies for obvious reasons. And you should understand that span entry protocol is there to prevent loops in the network. Um, you know, broadcast storms are real. Um, you know, if you have a loop in a network and you have a single laptop or a single device connected to a port and it sends out a broadcast, um, as you know, you know, those broadcasts are sent out every port on the switch except for the one the broadcast was received on. And if you have a loop in your topology, well, those broadcasts just multiply and multiply and basically lock up the CPU on your switches and they come crashing down. So span entry protocol is a, a loop prevention um, protocol. And I'm going to now log into my switches and we are going to go ahead and configure rapid spanning tree protocol right i am currently um, sshed into switch a um, i'm using putty terminal emulator um, it's connected on my com port 5 and i'm simply going to go into enable mode i have enabled um, console logging and terminal monitors so that if any changes happen to the topology, um, you know, we are going to see that um, in the log. So I'm now in enable mode and I just want to show you the config. I'm going to show you the running config on the switch. It's pretty straightforward. You know, we've got our VLAN 1. Um, I've only got VLAN 1 configured on the switch. Um, you know, I've got an IP address. Um, of 10.10.10.1, um, it's a class C. Um, I have no DHCP client enabled. Um, I've got my login console turned on. There's no Telnet server turned on for obvious reasons. I am running the Foundry Discovery Protocol just so that we can see our connectivity to our neighboring switches. And that's about it. Now, natively, a switch will run 802.1D standard spanning tree. And you can just run a show span and, you know, you will see your VLAN ID, um, your root bridge ID, the root port to reach the bridge on, and, you know, your forwarding states or the states of each of those individual ports. In this case, we can see that Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1 is currently forwarding. It does have a port cost. And our port 1 slash 1 slash 12, 131. 1 and 132 are 14, but just know that that is 802.1D, that is the original spanning tree protocol that is running on the switch. Now, to see who my neighboring devices are, um, I'm simply going to run a show if foundry discovery protocol neighbors. And as you can see, I have connectivity to switch B and C. Um, you know, they are all switches. You can see that I've got redundancy built in because I've got two links to switch B and two links to switch C. Um, Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 11 and 12, uh, both those links are 1 gig Ethernet links. And 131 and 132, those are my 10 gig fiber uplinks. Um, my computer, if I do a IP con Fig. Um, it has an IP address of 10.10.10.254, so it is part of the VLAN 1 um, subnet. 
And, um, you know, it is plugged directly into the switch on Ethernet port 1 slash 1 slash 1. And if I go and show that port, if I show interface E1 slash 1 slash 1, um, you will see that it is up, up. Um, that is actually my laptop directly connected to the switch port. Now, connectivity, I can show you um, that I can see the other switches. Um, I'm 10.1, 10.10.10.1. I can see my neighbors, 10.10.2, and I can see dot three. So that just shows you guys that I do have connectivity um, across all of these uplinks between my switches. I'm now going to go and configure um, rapid spanning free protocol. Um, the switch is running switch code. The config is carried out at the VLAN level. So I'm going to go into configure terminal and I am going to go into VLAN one. The command is quite simple. I'm going to run a spanning tree and it is 802.1W. Now 1W is the IEEE standard for rapid spanning tree protocol. And you know, if I go and put in a question mark after 802, um, dash 1w let's just put in a question mark again you can see all the options um, you know we can configure it at an ethernet port level we can go and set things like all our timers our forward delays our hello timers um, you know we can configure this if we had lag interfaces configured between the switches we can set max age intervals and more importantly we can actually set the uh, priority now Priority is um, a very serious consideration. Um, you know, if you set a very low priority on a switch in rapid spanning tree, well, it then becomes the root bridge. And hopefully we will understand the importance of the root bridge. It basically manages um, the rapid spanning tree protocol for all the switches, um, you know, that have connectivity and possibly redundant links between them. So, um, you know, that's how we go and set it up. Um, it is really straightforward. Um, so I'm just going to enable that. And of course, um, you know, my login console just goes absolutely crazy. You know, our, our ports at this state are, you know, going from blocking to learning um, to listening, forwarding. You know, they, they transition through different states as it builds out the spanning tree. So um, let's just let the log um, continue. Just check what all our port states are. Right, I've let all the uh, messages come in on the um, terminal monitor on the console. Um, I've cleared that all up. And, you know, we can now go and take a look at our rapid span entry protocol. I first just want to do a show run. Just want to show you the config. Um, VLAN 1 span entry 802.1W is configured. There it is. And you know, that's straightforward. We've gone in and enabled rapid spanning tree. Now, we can run the command show 802.1w, that is show rapid spanning tree. And we now get an output, and this gives us a lot of information. Um, you know, it says the spanning tree instance is owned by VLAN 1. Of course, we could have more than one VLAN configured on our switches, and we could run different instances of rapid spanning tree on different VLANs. But, you know, what this is now telling us is it's saying, well, our bridge identifier is this very long number. When you break it down, it's quite simple. The 8,000 is a hexadecimal number. Now, if I convert that and, you know, I've basically cheated. Um, what I'm saying is, and I'll show you guys, this, you know, if you get a little hexadecimal to decimal converter, a little calculator, <coughs> sorry, there's one called rapid table. And, you know, you go and type in 8,000 and you convert that. It says, well, our bridge priority is decimal 32768. And, you know, if I now want to change this switch to become the root bridge, I want to say hey you know what this is my core switch um it has a lot of processing power it has a lot of memory so you know what 
I would like the switch to become the root bridge. I can go in to conf t, configure terminal, go into spanning tree 802.1. Sorry, let's just back up there. We've got a VLAN 1, my apologies. Spanning tree 21W. And I can now give it a priority. And I'm going to say, well, you know what? This bridge's priority is now 4096. And straight away, we get a message to say, hang on, VLAN 1 bridge is now the root bridge. And if we go and show 802.1W, we now go and see the output and we go and say, well, hang on a sec. Um, just let all the messages come through because, of course, um, you know, the whole topology is now converging. Um, now that this is now the root bridge, you know, all our port states are going to change, etc. Let's just let that all run through. You know, all our ports are going to go through all the different stages of learning to forwarding. The good news is, is with rapid span entry, that transition ha happens a lot faster. Um, than traditional span entry. You know, you could wait up to 50 seconds um, for the topology to um, converge with, um, you know, 802.1D, um, you know, the traditional span entry protocol. Rapid span entry, that happens a lot faster. If we now go and show 802.1W, we now see something different. Um, our bridge identifier is now 1,000. That's hexadecimal. We put in, um, you know, 4096 as our priority in decimal. That is our switches MAC address over there. We have all our timers for our BPDUs. You know, we have our brick, our max age, our hello timers, our forward delay, the version that we're running. And it now says to you, well, hang on a sec, our bridge identifier ends in 40C, and it says, well, the root bridge is 40C. This now means that we are the root bridge on the network. And, you know, if I look at more of this config, we look at our ports now, <coughs> we now see different states. Um, if you look at port 1 slash 1 slash 1, this is my laptop. Um, it is connected and it is forwarding. It is considered an edge port and it has a cost of 20,000. Now, different port speeds have different costs. Um, that is a one gig port speed. It is connected up to my laptop at one gigabit per second. If you look at ports one slash one slash 11 and 12 down here, they have the same value of 20,000. So they are one gig ports and if we continue down, we now see lower values for port costs for 131 and 132. They have a value of 2000. They are designated as forwarding. From your root bridge, guys, all your ports are forwarding and they are designated as forwarding. So this is our root bridge. Um, you know, you can quite clearly see the ports. You can identify it as the root because you know your bridge identifier and the root bridge identifier match exactly. Um, we did lower the priority, and that basically forced the switch to become the root bridge. Um, you know, in your spanning tree topology. Right, so we can see our topology. We've learned who our root bridge is. We can see our different port states, and of course the costs associated to those ports. And I think at this point, I am now going to go and log in for you guys. Um, I'm going to SSH into switch B. And I'll put in the username, uh, password. Just give it a second to connect to the remote host. And again, I'm going to go into enable mode. I'm quickly going to show run on this switch just to make sure that we don't have any configs that shouldn't be there. Right, so we've got our stack imports, our modules, our VLAN 1. Uh, we've got our IP address, our host name. We've enabled 
our logging console, we've got FTP run. Um, in fact, logging console is not enabled. So let's go into configure terminal and we'll enable our logging console and we will turn on terminal monitor so we can see all the messaging coming through directly on the console. Sorry, it's actually terminal logging. Ah, if I could type today, it would be great. Terminal logging features now enabled. And if we show our rapid span entry, we see that it is currently disabled for VLAN 1. So let's go and turn it on. It's quite straightforward. We go into VLAN 1. And we go span entry 802.1w. We're not going to change priority, or we could if we wanted to, but you know we already know that switch A has a really low priority, and it's the switch we chose to be the root bridge. So we're just going to enable rapid span entry. I'm going to exit out of our config mode. And I'm now going to run uh, show rapid spanning tree. When we look at this, we say, well, okay, so our bridge identifier, we now have a hex value of 8,000. If I shoot back to our, sorry, not that, to my calculator. <coughs> so it is a decimal number of 32,768 and that of course is followed by our switch MAC address <coughs> it tells us who our root bridge is so this means well hang on a sec we are not the root bridge there's the root bridge of course it's got a much lower priority it's a thousand over our switch having a priority of 8,000 um, it says, well, our root port to get to the root bridge, we are using Ethernet 1 slash 3 slash 1. It is a 10 gig fiber interface, so that makes sense. And again, it shows us all our port states. So, you know, we've got port 1 slash 1 slash 1. Um, it's got a cost of 2,000. So, you know, that is a 1 gig port. Sorry, 20,000. Those are all our 1 gig ports. And 131 is 2000, and you will see that it is forwarding. And port 1 slash 1 slash 1, because it's the lowest port number, becomes our designated forwarding. And of course, we then have alternate discarding ports. Um, you know, that just gives us a, a clear indication of, of what those different port states are. Just to revisit the topology, I'm going to run a show. Boundary Discovery Protocol. Um, those are just the timers. Um, I'm going to show our neighbors. And there you go. You know, switch B has Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 1 connected up to C. Um, it's also got two links into switch A, Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 11 and 131. 131 again is the 10 gig interface and the other two are 100 megabit per second. So um, you know, that's just a view. If you run the span entry view, um, you run the command, rapid span entry, of course, you get all your port states. You can see your bridge identifier. You can see the cost um, to get to the root. You've got all your BPDU timers. Um, you know, you can see each of your individual ports and their cost. You can see the um, specific port used to get to your root bridge. A lot of really good information there. So, um, you know, just take note of that output. It gives you a lot of good information about, hey, which ports are actually forwarding, you know, which are discarding, but which are your actual, um, you know, your alternate discarding ports, which are your designated forwarding. And, you know, of course, your root port is the port with the lowest cost to get to your root bridge. So it's very informative, a lot of good information there. Now I want to show you or what happens, um, you know, if we had to disable one of these ports, um, you know, we have redundant links and we can see that Ethernet 131 has a lower cost. It is our root port. It is forwarding to the root bridge. 
And if we now go in and disable that port, I'm going to go into interface Ethernet 1 slash 3 slash 1, and I am going to disable it. For the rapid span entry, um, the, you know, the network converges in seconds. And, you know, if I show rapid span entry now, and we look at this, the output, and we go, hang on a sec, 131 is disabled, and you can now see port 1111 with a cost of 20,000, so it's our one gig port, is now the root port, and it's forwarding to the root bridge. 1112 becomes the designated port that is forwarding. <coughs> the reason 1 slash 1 slash 11 was chosen as the designated port for forwarding is because it is a lower port number. Um, and, you know, 1 slash 1 slash 1 um, is a 1 gig port. It is alternate discarding. Um, so those are our port states. Um, you know, as soon as we disable the port, well, rapid span entry has to reconverge. And as you can see, it happens extremely quickly. Now, just to expand on the config, um, you know, we can also go into an interface. In this case, I'm going to take interface Ethernet 1 slash 1 slash 11. And I'm going to look at some of the span entry config that can be done <coughs> at a port level. You know, right down to port level, we can go and specify disable or enable rapid span entry, you know, for a physical port. We can also go and designate a port as, you know, designated protect. Um, in other words, it can sort of be a guard for all of our span entries. We can also enable um, functionality for root protect. <coughs> in other words, it would um, be the root guard for all our spanning trees that are in operation. Um, so that's quite handy. Let's just um, exit out of that. We could also go into a VLAN 1. Spanning tree 802 1W. You know, as I said, you can set your priorities there. Um, you know, you can go into a specific Ethernet port. So if you again go into one slash one slash eleven. Oh, let's just go uh, Ethernet. Sorry, let's go Ethernet one slash one slash eleven. And question mark and we can now specify this as well do we want it to be an admin edge port in other words is this a client device that's just connected directly into the switch port we can set up things like admin point to point mac enabled in other words that's for your links between your switches switch to switch um, connectivity you can disable your rapid span entry for that specific interface um, you know you can go and Set your path costs if you want to change the cost for that interface. And you can even go and change your spanning tree priority at the port level. Um, you know, so that's at your VLAN or in your VLAN configuration. And um, guys, I hope this has been informative. Um, it's certainly should help you um you know when you go and configure span entry hope you enjoyed the video um thank you very much for watching